When you're talking about solubility, there are a couple of terms that are important to understand. The first one is solubility. Solubility is just the amount of something that can dissolve in a certain amount of water. We can express this a couple of different ways. Two of the more common ones are moles per liter, molarity, or grams per liter. The moles per liter term is also known as a molar solubility. Another word to know is saturated. This is when no more material can dissolve in a solution before a precipitation would start. So in the example that we have at the top of the screen, calcium carbonate solid dissociating to give calcium ions and carbonate ions, a saturated solution would be when no more calcium carbonate can dissolve before a solid calcium carbonate precipitate would start to form on the bottom of the container. At this point, the value of Q is equal to the value of K for the equilibrium. The third term that we need to know is the solubility product constant, KSP. This is just the name for the K value for a solubility equilibrium. Consider the example of calcium carbonate dissolving into water. You would have solid calcium carbonate being introduced into water, and when that calcium carbonate dissolves, it will start to dissociate into its ions calcium and carbonate. We can work out the concentrations of the calcium ion and carbonate ion at equilibrium using an ice table. When you've constructed your ice table, you should find that the solid doesn't change in concentration and the calcium ion and the carbonate ion increase uh, in the same stoichiometric amounts. We can write our K expression for the calcium carbonate equilibrium. In this case, calcium carbonate has a K value of 3.4 times 10 to the minus 9. If we plug our values of x, our equilibrium concentrations, into that expression, we can solve for the equilibrium values of calcium ion and carbonate ion. This answer of 5.8 times 10 to the minus 5 molar means that at equilibrium, the concentration of calcium ions and the concentration of carbonate ions is going to be 5.8 times 10 to the minus 5 molar. And this is for any amount of calcium carbonate that we want to put into water. We can put in a tiny amount, we can put in an enormous amount. If the system's at equilibrium, the concentrations of ions will be 5.8 times 10 to the minus 5 molar, and this is the amount of ions that you can have in a saturated solution. If you add any more calcium ion, or any more carbonate ion to this solution, what will happen is the Q value will now be larger than your K, and solid calcium carbonate will start to precipitate. We can use this value to work out the amount of calcium carbonate that can dissolve in water. That is, we can work out the solubility of calcium carbonate. We have values of X, or equilibrium concentrations of the ions. These ions had to come from somewhere, and even though the concentration of calcium carbonate does not change, the amount of calcium carbonate must be less than it was initially. Some of that calcium carbonate had to react in order to form the ions. And we can use normal stoichiometry to work out how much calcium carbonate must have dissolved. Using the normal stoichiometry, we can work out that 5.8 times 10 to the minus 5 molar worth of calcium carbonate dissolved. Again, remember that the concentration of calcium carbonate won't change, but the number of moles will change. So if we had a volume of solution, we could apply the volume to the molarity to work out the number of moles of calcium carbonate that dissolved. But even without that, this value is useful. This value is also the molar solubility of calcium carbonate. That is, in any one liter of solution, you can get 5.8 times 10 to the minus 5 moles worth of calcium carbonate to dissolve.
Now we can look at a similar example, but something with a slightly different stoichiometry. Again, we can work out the concentration of ions at equilibrium, and we can work out a molar solubility of calcium fluoride. This time the structure of our K expression is a little bit different because the stoichiometry is different. Now we end up in a situation where our concentration of ions is not equal. Calcium ion is half the concentration of the fluoride ion. And this means we have to be a little bit careful when we work out our molar solubility of calcium fluoride. In our previous example, the stoichiometry of everything was one to one. But in this case, the calcium fluoride to fluoride ion ratio is one to two. So we have to be explicit about using our molar ratios here. And again, the value that we calculate for calcium fluoride is going to be the molar solubility. That is the amount in moles of calcium fluoride that can dissolve in a single liter of water. In this example, we'll be doing the same type of thing, but in reverse. We're given a molar solubility of calcium hydroxide, 0.024 molar, and we're asked, what is the KSP for calcium hydroxide? Again, the structure is very much the same. You write an equilibrium expression and build an ice table. In this case, we're told calcium hydroxide's molar solubility so in a saturated solution of calcium hydroxide, 0.024 moles of calcium hydroxide will dissolve in a liter of water. And we can use that to work out the equilibrium concentrations of calcium and hydroxide ions. Now we have our equilibrium values for calcium ion and hydroxide ion, and we can plug those values into our K expression. And when we've done that, we find the KSP for calcium hydroxide is 5.5 times 10 to the minus 5. 